Hi folks, welcome to part nine of our fixture recap series. The videos focus on how the fixturing was done and hopefully these videos serve as a resource whether you're trying to figure out a creative idea, a creative technique or the actual specific CAD cam and setup workflow to machine your parts. Before we dive in, we created a PDF that summarizes all of the 10 fixturing techniques we covered through this recap series. Download it, use it as a reference, use it as a guide. We talk about the pros and the cons of each of those techniques. Hopefully it serves as a resource when you're trying to figure out the best way to hold that part. Okay, let's dive in. Today's video is all about tabbing and window machining. So what is window machining? Window machining lets us really simplify a lot of fixturing, especially the fixturing for that second or third operation by letting the material serve as the fixture itself and that's done so with tabbing. We're gonna go through a bunch of those examples and we're gonna talk about tabbing in and of itself. Oftentimes where you're holding on with a vise or a dovetail and you wanna self fixture that material, machining the part all the way down to there's just one final tab holding that part on. We'll start off with this part that we made for Project Egress. It is a linkage rod, actually a number of really cool machining tips in here beyond tabbing and machining. We used a lollipop cutter to cut the internal radiuses to make this universal joint. Window machining let us make this part without having to have additional OP2 and OP3 fixtures by flipping the part over and holding it inside of a window, effectively a relatively inexpensive piece of aluminum, machining it through using the tab function within 2D Contour in Fusion 360. You can leave those tabs in place and just snip them off and then file them out or scotch write them out, or my preferred way, hot glue. We've actually used this technique so much that we've upgraded to a cordless hot glue gun. What hot glue lets you do is pot the part you don't need that much work holding rigidity and hot glue tends to be sufficient. Then you use 2D contour. I usually leave a few thousand stock to leave technically to stay off the part to come back and machine off those tabs in place. In this example, we added hot glue all the way around the part. The problem with that is the hot glue will build up on the end mill. So a better technique is just to add hot glue on areas around the part, not near the tabs, leaving the tabs open and exposed so that when you machine them, you're not machining through that hot glue. Widget 181, we made a pair of gears. We grabbed two pieces of raw material, making sure they were large enough in Y to fit the part, plus the tool path around the periphery of the part. We wanted to do as much as we possibly could in this first setup, and we didn't want to have to reorient the part in an OP2 fixture for a proper backside chamfer. So we went ahead and backside chamfered the part here in OP1. We then profiled all the way around the part, just leaving a few tabs, and we then could flip it over to do a backside deck you could also turn it in the lathe. So there is still an OP2 in this part, but what was great is the OP2 didn't require any clocking or orientation of the part, and thus a much simpler and less risky OP2. Widget 145 was inspired by a part that we saw at a trade show. Kind of opened my eyes to what you can do with window machining, not only by holding the parts in place or self-fixturing, but also that ability to flip the part with the material itself surfing as the fixture. So I wanted to make a part that represented the golden ratio. What would make this part otherwise difficult is that the part tapers. So this video walks through the tutorial of how we model the part, how we set it up, and then we included a locating feature for when we flip the part. We left three small tabs toward the top of the part and one larger tab at the bottom. We then machined those three smaller tabs totally away, leaving only the tab at the base of the part. Next up was a video we did dedicated to various different tabbing strategies, mostly around five axis parts, although many of these strategies still have relevance in a three or four axis application. We started off with an example of leaving a thicker tab. This works great when you already know you have to do an additional machining strategy on that backside where you can also machine off that otherwise thick tab. We then showed using thinner tabs, small enough that you can tear off by hand or cut away with a pair of snips and scotch bright them in. We talked about the benefits of tabbing with multiple tabs either on the same plane or a better strategy is to put two or three tabs on two different planes. This helps prevent the part from flopping away. Flopping parts look great on Instagram, but it's actually much nicer to have the part held stably in place until the absolute end. And then we talk about proper window machining. This part is actually a part we were able to machine in collaboration with a university. It is going to the moon. We're super excited about it. It'll be a video we'll release hopefully later in 2021, but it's a great example of a part where window machining was the absolute best way to do this part in one set of one operation 
and toward the end, we used hot glue to pot that part in place, which meant we were able to machine, chamfer, and deburr every single surface of this part in a single setup before it came off the machine. We then showed a really good example from Dr. Phil, window machining where on the same piece of raw material, you use a clamp up here on the top right to then secure your part in place. Basically think of the clamp as doing the job of the hot glue where it's holding that part in place when you wanna finish off that final tab. And then finally we talked about the use of slitting saws to cut away either the tab or the whole part. And finally, a fixturing video dedicated on the window machining plus hot glue technique. This was a decal scraper that we made for Stuart Haas Racing. The key here was we had to think about the tooling strategy to maintain rigidity throughout this part by machining the parts furthest away from the vise first. That way we were able to get the good surface finishes, chamfers, and engraving. We tabbed it, potted it in with hot glue, and zipped off the two sides. And again, we're done with the part in one operation, one setup. We'll have all these videos listed out over on the NYC CNC page, as well as our, all of our other fixture recap series videos. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.